We didn't want it. Eleven thirty this morning, they announced to us that the plant was going to be permanently closed, put up for sale or lease. They told us that the plant would cease operation by April. And you thought you'd seen the handwriting on the wall. You thought you'd seen it. And I want to tell you that you're wrong. This company doesn't even have the decency to ship our jobs to other American workers. The American worker. Some people have forgotten the craftsmanship he brings to his job. Some say he's not as important as he used to be. Well, to that, we politely answer, bunk. At Zenith, Americans like these produce the color TV that service technicians named more than any other as the one that needs fewest repairs. American workers, Zenith workers, they make sure the quality goes in before the name goes on. The labor savings by moving offshore are five to seven thousand dollars a job. We believe that Zenith has tried longer, has tried harder, and has tried more successfully than any other United States company to protect the jobs of its American employees. It is now apparent, however, that unless we take actions that will result in the moving of about five thousand jobs to lower labor cost areas, it will be impossible for us to protect the interest of our stockholders and the interest of some 15,000 Zenith employees whose jobs will remain in the United States. And we have a right to say that that employer has a community responsibility, a responsibility that says you don't go to the place that you can get the cheapest labor or the best tax deal. And I'm not just classifying Zenith because there's one hell of a lot of other corporations that are doing the same thing that Zenith's doing, what they're doing to you here in the United States today. That you, when you invest in a community, that it means to be a good citizen. It means to provide jobs for those people that live in that community. And I say to you that if the people in the free enterprise system in this country can't provide the jobs for the American workers, and by God, the government of this country should, and it will someday. Yeah. I am Sandra Jorgensen. I grew up in Sioux City. I've been here all my life. Stephen's my little boy. And I was so excited about having a little boy. I have a little girl named Kimmy. My name is Dennis Jorgensen. I've lived in Sioux City all my life, and I think it's just the right size city to raise a family. 
In September, Zenith came out with a letter that was signed by the president. It said there was a cutback. We're going to have to move some of their stuff to uh, Taiwan and Mexico. The first reaction was Zenith had always uh, prided themselves in being an American company. And their advertising had been built around that. What, what a great workforce America had and how much work you could get out of the American worker. And uh, they're going to turn around and take this all away from the American worker and give it to some other country or some other, other people. And that was sickening. When I heard that I was going to be laid off, I almost wanted to cry. I couldn't believe it. I thought, working there eight years, now getting kicked in the butt, might end up losing all we got and have to start all over again someplace else. It's just depressing, very depressing. Because nobody likes the thought of having to start all over again. When you start at the bottom, you've got to start all over with the layoffs, shortages every year. It's a merry-go-round if you don't settle into something. I'd like to be able to earn a decent living, earning enough money to have a nice home. I'd like to go up to the one that started this whole damn mess and punch him right in the nose. <laughs> they just want that cheaper labor. And they'll go out and get it. I think we should come first before anybody. We've helped them people like in Taiwan. The government's helped them so much. Start helping us. We are out to make our living by God. Well, I think we're on a uh, one-way road to ultimate disaster if we don't do something to protect the jobs of American workers. Uh. I don't think that the free enterprise system or the capitalist system has ever succeeded in the world, anywhere in the world, unless there was, was a middle class or a labor class or whatever you want to call it that was well paid and that was able to consume goods. You just can't combine high unemployment uh, with democracy. It can't be done. Excuse me why I, why I blow a little bit. To those, uh, those around this community, the farmer in Kingsley, the, the businessman in Sheldon, Iowa, and the others who have written in the letters to the editor claiming that it's a high wages and it's a great union contract that we have with Zenith that's driving Zenith to Taiwan and Mexico, I want to say that he's full of shit. And that's the best way I can put it. If they think, if they think that $3.30 in our days and times is the reason that we lost our jobs to Taiwan and Mexico, they got another thing coming. We have a very special problem here where about 93% of the Zenith workers are females. They're either divorced, widowed, with kids, or single alone. They're proud people, and they're working rather than taking the handout, and they're proud of it. Some way, We've got to get back to where we care about each other. And somehow, some way, we got to get back to the point where if you're hurting, I'm hurting. If you've got a need, I've got a need. But I don't think any of us can make it alone. I know I couldn't. Now, they can't get the high levels of living without suffering some of the costs of getting the high levels of living. Some of the costs may be short spells of unemployment, but they will be short if they will take alternative jobs, and alternative jobs are available, sometimes elsewhere or sometimes in Sioux City. My name is Janice Dickett. I have three children. My marriage only lasted seven years. Well, here I thought, Working at Zenith, I would build my rights up. I'd build up my Social Security. I'd build up my profit sharing. All my buildings are down. I don't think I would leave the city because it has been my home. And going into a strange city, I don't know if I could do this by myself. Not by myself and three children, anyhow. Come, Lord Jesus. America. With Zenith closing, 
It means that I cannot take care of my children myself. And I can't see being away from your home and going to a job that isn't going to pay anything because I don't feel like it's worth it. If you're going to be out there working, they better pay a decent wage that you can live on. Well, when people lose jobs, certainly we're always going to be concerned about the fact that uh, for the moment that's going to be causing distress. But what we've got to recognize is that we want that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You do have to go get the pot of gold, and that does mean making changes. If we want higher levels of living, you do have to move ahead. You can't sit still. I think that uh, a person uh, who in good faith has moved into a certain trained occupation uh, deserves something from society. Well, the people who apparently are getting hurt in the process of a Sioux City plant closing, for instance, uh, over the spell of their whole lives are being benefited by that kind of plant closing, plant openings that are occurring because they're getting, they were getting higher wages in that plant than they could have gotten elsewhere because the flexibility and adaptability of the economy is such that that plant got located there in the first place. You won't get the flexible economy, which is the best for all of us, if you take this ruthless, the public be damned attitude, let the market uh, decide the market, the market, the market, it, it won't sell. And that's the test for the market. I am Dora Lee. I'm 55. I've been a widow of the CB three years this coming January. When Claude was alive, I never worried. But Without him, it doesn't seem to work out. It seemed like I'd take five steps ahead and ten backwards. There was quite a few bills that I had to pay with what money we had. I have always felt bad that I cannot afford a stone for him. This has bothered me. I don't have a marker for the grape. If I can keep my head above water, I hope someday to get a marker for Dad. I tell you, right after Claude died, you know, everybody was willing to help, eager to help. But it kind of slides by. They kind of get tired of it. After a while, they kind of forget that you're over here, that you're around here, that maybe you need a little help. I'm the only child living. The burden is on my shoulder of taking care of my mother. I just feel bad that I can't do more for her than what I do. If Zenith was to close down, I don't know what I'd do, because I'm 55 years old. Where do you go? Where well, I hope that from a Zenith a successful places on account of the people like me that are proud of their job and want to do the job and do do a good job. And I don't think it's right to see them, don't take that into consideration. How they can do this to us, I don't know. Well, granted, the worker who has a specific skill that's tied to a specific location, a specific job, does have some adjustment problems that are involved there. Now, the adjustment problems tend to be overplayed, however. We find an awful lot of 70-year-old workers who change jobs and do quite well. Uh, this is a matter of attitude, willingness, uh, adaptability, and adaptability is not just a matter of indigenous human quality, it's a matter of willingness to do the adapting. My name is Michael Kane. I'm Patty's boyfriend. First time I asked Patty to go out on a date, I think I was giving her a ride home from work. Before I met Patty, I never even knew a deaf person in my life. And, and it was such a hassle to try to fingerspell everything. As time went by, I started taking sign language courses. Within four months, I was able to carry on somewhat of a conversation. I enjoyed being with her. Patty used to take me to uh, meet a lot of her deaf friends, and I used to really enjoy it because it was really a different situation. 
I started to get to know them, and we all basically did the same things, except for they talked with their hands, and I talked with my mouth. And that was about the only difference. It seemed like we'd have the same taste, the same likes. You know, there's some people that are cheerful all the time, and I think Patty's that way, and I think people just seem to like her easy. She's a self-dependent person. I think she gets along on her own real good. Patty's job at Zenith is real important to her because there's where her self-dependence is. If she loses her job at Zenith, she might have an awful hard time trying to find a job, especially with the amount of people in this area that are out of work. She is going to be limited for the job she could get, you know. I told her that I thought it was really a bad deal. She didn't understand the reasoning behind it. I don't blame her. I don't understand it either. She's like anybody else. She has to make car payments, pay rent, has to eat. There's no doubt her standard of living has to go down. It's our experience at Zenith that the men and women that we had in our American plants were every bit as productive as any we've ever had overseas. It's our opinion that they produced products that were of every bit as high quality as any products that we've produced overseas. They are substantially higher paid. Uh, there isn't any way you're going to ask men and women to walk into American plants and work for 25 cents an hour or a dollar an hour. So the American employee is substantially uh, higher paid. I think it's absolutely preposterous for anybody in the United States of America to sit back and say, we have it too good we are too wealthy, we make too much money, or our standard of living is too high. At the very least, we have a world obligation, in my humble judgment, to maintain at least what we have as a standard of living, hopefully perfect it, but at least maintain it as a goal to which all of the balance of the world ought to aspire, and that we ought to be taking every action we can as a people, and as a government, and as concerned human beings with assisting other nations of the world to achieve that aspiration. To do anything else to me is retrogressive and antisocial. My name is William Morris. We were one of the first ones that started this uh, American Indian Center years ago. My name is Arlene Morris, and I was born in Winnebago, Nebraska, on an Indian reservation. I'm a full-blooded Winnebago Indian, no other blood. I've had 12 children, I have 11 living. Seven daughters and four sons, all within a span of 22 years. I lived life as it came. I guess that's my philosophy in life. You take what comes. Deep down I had an ambition. I wanted to be something. At first it was a doctor, but maybe that was a child's wish. Then I wanted to be a nurse, because I like to take care of things and see things heal. I wanted to be independent, instead of being dependent all these years on my husband. So I decided to go to work. Well, I feel proud because I'm part of the breadwinner. And when my children want something, I don't have to say, no, you can't have it till when we can afford it. Most of the time I can fulfill their wishes. Well, Zenith changed everything, you know, for me. If you're young, you could say, oh, the hell with it. Get another job somewhere else, easier, you know. But me, I'm getting the age where I'm probably walking someplace and it's, and it's ah, you're too old, you can't, you can't use you. I know I'm going to hear that a lot of places. I want to be the provider. I want to make enough money to see them smile when I come in that door. I had a very tough life when I was a kid. A lot of meals there. 
I can say I come away from the table hungry, you see. Well, when I first heard Zenith was going to lay off people or even close down, I guess I just didn't want to believe it. I just left it in the back of my mind, you know, let the other people talk about it. I'm not going to even think about it. Well, there are moments when I just about think about it and I get frightened. I, I closing it, so I close the doors on us again, see? If this happens, I don't want to go on the welfare rolls. Just want to find another job and go to work. We stand right on the threshold of war in the streets of America because we already have an unemployment problem with a lot of disenchanted minority people being the primary victims of that. And all we need now are a few displaced workers that believe they have legitimate rights to jobs and join that army of the unemployed. And I think you've got the potential for a very hot time in America's streets. And I would see that as the beginning of uh, the crumbling of a great society. There are alternative jobs available. The people are laid off in the import competing industries are being laid off in the economy where 20 million people change jobs every year. We're eliminating low wage jobs and increasing the number of high wage jobs. My last day at Zenith was probably one of the lowest days I've ever experienced in my life. It's a day that I hope I never have to go through again. I didn't want to miss anybody. I didn't want to leave until I could see you. You don't owe me a thing. A year ago, I never felt a threat. I was very comfortable with my life and the way we lived and the fact that the job will always be there. The family will stay here until this property is sold. And the kids will go back to school here and my wife will be here alone. I'll go to Minneapolis, find an apartment or some place to live for a while. To our wonderful friends, the Alberts. Richard, I'm really starting all over again. Another home, another city. Everything is going to be restarted. <laughs> Friends. You know, it won't be the same. Friends will always be true. Good luck, and may God bless you. American workers. Some people say they're not as good as they used to be. Well, to that, we politely answer, bunk. Behind every Zenith color TV are thousands of American workers like these. I'm the general manager of Zenith Taiwan Corporation. I have found the working conditions here very favorable. Um, the people themselves, they are willing to take on tasks and assignments irregardless of the extent of that task. If it requires 10 to 14 hours a day of work, this is complied with. Well, the average week uh, consists of 45 actual working hours. The average salary on a monthly basis would be about $51 a month, U.S. money. We provide a meal subsidy. We provide one meal a day, which is their lunch. We also provide transportation subsidy. It is figured as a fringe benefit to the base. Everybody seems to forget that America is the world's marketplace. America is where they want to go. America is where these producers look as the market for their products. And as a consequence of that, the American worker is the only one that loses in the whole cycle because his job disappears. He has nothing but uh, short-term protection for his uh, existence, his standard of living, the future of his family. The corporation's profits go on uninterrupted as long as they have this free access back to the American marketplace. The foreign worker is exploited because of his low wage rate and the prohibition uh, of unions or the ruthless suppression of them in most of these places. And because he is exploited, he never earns enough money building that product to become a consumer of it. And for that reason, 100% of it comes back to the United States. And everybody goes merrily on 
except the American worker. He's the one that's left out of the circle and uh, bears the brunt of it. We do need verification of the Social Security numbers. Your Social Security card, a paycheck stub, to verify the number before you leave. What we're doing is going to use this form here to help set up your file so that when you are eventually laid off because of the imports, we will have already started a file for you in Des Moines for the trade readjustment. We're going to start working on those now. So please fill it out carefully. If you have any problems, any questions, please raise your hand. Mr. Tom or Mr. Kacharis will be around to help you. I'm the operation manager of Reynosa. We're paying the minimum salary under Mexican law, 122 pesos per day. It's about $5.42 a day. But for $5.42 a day, we have not had any problem attracting workers. Gracias. They're hardworking people. The people need the jobs. And I mean really need the jobs. I am uh, pleased with what Zine has been able to do for the Mexican people in Reynosa. It's a successful manufacturing operation. Every other civilized de industrial democracy in this world today takes protective measures for the jobs of its citizens, except the United States of America. We're the only one that doesn't erect some kind of protection beyond a place at the end of the unemployment compensation line for displaced workers. In the world at large, although we do not have free trade, we have freer trade than we did 20 years ago or 40 years ago. Now, mind you, it's still difficult to land goods in Japan and market them and sell them, and there are restrictions in France and in many markets against us. Let's operate in the public interest, and if people want to call that protectionism, I reject that definition. Barrier for barrier, what we get is what we should practice. And in that way, you'll have fair trade. It may not necessarily be as free as it is now, but it'll sure be fairer. Tonight's meeting will be the probably the final meeting we'll have before plant shutdown. We're going to cover the things that we think are going to help you as the plant closes down, your unemployment extends. We don't want welfare, we don't want handouts. We'd rather not be on unemployment and TRA, we want jobs.